afternoon. It is my pleasure, in fact, to introduce Salvador Zanata from the same university as I am, University of Sao Paulo. Very welcome to Beyond Uniform Hyperbolicity. And it's my pleasure to announce that he will talk about something like homotopically unbounded, unbounded disks for generic surface diffeomorphism. You cannot listen to me. No, I think these two microphones are working. Oh, I can't speak louder. I, 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 I'm not going to be able to handle this. I'll, I'll just speak louder. I think it's better. I'll pretend I am my class. <laughs> okay, so I said I, I, I'm thankful for the opportunity. And I also gave quite some thought if I should uh, give this talk as I already gave it. And I will change things a little bit because I think that uh, my main results are not as interesting for this audience than the, some of the technical and auxiliary results. So I will hopefully in the end, I'll have time to explain the main result, but uh, I'll try to, to go on a not the usual path for a talk. Okay, so uh, the, the only thing I'm going to speak in the beginning about the main result is what what is an homotopically unbounded disk. Okay, so uh, let me just say that suppose M. Uh, sorry. What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Let M be a closed orientable surface of positive genus. And okay. Let them be a closed orientable surface of positive genes. Think of P2. Okay, P2 is the easiest case for you to have a picture. So uh, if D is an open topological disk. Uh, we say it is homotopically unbounded when when what happens? Well, you have your surface. Okay, I say pink of T2 and I draw, it's, this is T2, okay? Let me forget it. <laughs> okay, and you have a disk here. D. And you consider the covering map from the universal cover to your surface. In case of P2, it's R2. So if the diameter of a connected component of pi, pi minus one of the mm -hmm. thing, or if you could just say that if each connected component is unbounded, then D is almost totally unbounded. Okay, so this is a way, instead of saying, oh, uh, we're studying unbounded this, there, the, the surface is, is covered. So everything is bounded, but we mean that the, uh, the disk is unbounded. If when you lift it to the universal cover, each connected component is unbounded. Okay. This is the, so what we, uh, 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 are we studying? We are looking for uh, whether surface diffeomorphisms can have this kind of disk or not. 
periodic. Of course, of course, <laughs> kind of, but I mean periodic or invariant. Okay, so this is uh, uh, a question that uh, uh, several people have been studying for quite some time, and and uh, at at this point, I'm just going to say that uh, uh, <laughs> this is not made for left-handed people. Uh, if uh, f is a omeo. Okay, let me write in my. Mm -hmm. If F homotopic to the identity uh, is, for instance, no wonder. Okay, let me not enter into that. Is error preserving, which everyone knows. Of course, everyone knows what no wonder means, but maybe this is easier to. Then, under natural conditions, there does not exist. Homotopically unbounded periodic disks. Okay, so if you are in the area preserving world, uh, uh, plus some uh, other natural conditions, you do not have this. These kind of results have been proven by Fabio uh, Tau and Andres Kuropecki, and, and by myself also under uh, differentiable conditions. Uh, with some uniform bounds for the diameter. Okay, so no, I mean if F is higher preserving than under natural conditions, there does not exist homotopically unbounded periodic disk. So so F comes here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, maybe I could have F periodic. Okay, so so these kind of things they do not happen unless in very degenerate situations they do not happen in surface dynamics in conservative set. Okay, so uh, uh, but in in the general situation they have. So this was the objective of this work, and but instead of continuing uh, in you know, trying to give the necessary definitions and state our theorem. I'll just go to some uh, of the some of the technical results that I think, as I said, might be of more interest. Yeah, of course. So the conditions are uh, okay. The there is a strong version with okay, the, the simplest hypothesis we can put here is uh, suppose the, the okay, let, let's think of each period. So suppose you want to show that uh, there are no invariant unbounded disks, then uh, you must, the, the fixed point set of your map must be, uh, the complement must be fully set. So for, in other words, uh, the, the fixed point must be so fast. If the fixed point set of your map is so classical, then there is a bound on the diameter of invariance. So, if for every period the set of periodic points, I mean, for period five, the set of fixed uh, point for F5 is so classical for F6, is the set of fixed point for F6, they are all classical, then there is a bound, uh, there, there does not exist any homotopical bounds. Yeah, those are generated exactly. Yeah. What? The point is, if you have finite magnitude, point of the magnitude, point of the point of the point of the there's no involvement. You did are a Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the results I'm going to speak about. They try to deal with 
suppose you have a disk under certain conditions and we want to understand the dynamics uh, uh, in this disk. Okay, so these results are used in particular to describe the dynamics in the uh, homotopically unbounded disk. But uh, we, we do not make this hypothesis in this data. Okay, so let me start with the first result that has no genus yet. So this is the, the simplest possible result. I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, uh, is, okay, I'll say it right now. So this work is a joint work with uh, Andres Koropek from Brazil. Okay, so the first lemma says the following. Uh, so we do not have genus yet. Let F from S2 to S2 be a CR generic for any R larger than one detail. Uh, and let Z belonging to S2 B. Z is a saddle, right? And I'm going to state that it's a fixed saddle only for the, the statement to be simple, but it could be any field. Z be a fixed saddle. Uh, if D is a connected component of I'll have to say a few words about this. I'll say in a second. And uh, this is the prime end's rotation number of D. I'm assuming it's rational. So let F be a CR generic detail and let C be a fixed set. Uh, if D is a connected component of the complement closure of the table manifold, for instance, for instance and, and uh, I forgot to say what if D is a period. Okay, because as we are not assuming, uh, I mean, if you if you were assuming a uh, uh, preservation of area, then uh, every connected component of the complement of uh, the environment has to be periodic. But uh, in the general setting, it would be positive. So it would be a disk that never be So you have to assume that it's periodic. So I'm trying to describe, you You have a, a, a sphere, and you have a saddle, you look at the closure of, for instance, the table manifold, you have a connected component in the component uh, to assume it's periodic. I'm trying to describe what kind of dynamics is there. Okay, so uh, uh, if the prime and rotation number of D is rational, then D is the phasing of a connected. Okay, so uh, uh, and if instead of stable manifolds we had uh, unstable manifolds, then it would be the basing of a connected repeller inside. It. I will explain that it's the prime man position now. It's a, I was, I, was, I mean, as to is the sphere. No. Yeah, exactly. No, in the area preserving world, generically, it's always irrational. Okay, so this is uh, one of the big issues. Okay, so uh, let me see if it's correct. So let that be a CR generic detail, and let's see if this is better. If you use the question for periodic component, and the primary position number is rational, then D is the basing of a connected effect of two seven. So, what is this primary position number? So, if you have, suppose you have uh, on the sphere, okay, you have uh, uh, an environment is D, whose boundary is 
uh, a Jordan curve. So the boundary of this, I hope that this could be a Jordan curve or could be something more complicated, right? When it's a Jordan curve, clearly uh, your home, your diffuse, sorry, uh, restricted to the boundary is a circle diffuse. And so you have all the, everything you know, if you assume that the rotation number is rational, then you must have a periodic point in the boundary, blah, blah, blah. Okay, when the boundary is more complicated in general, any kind of weird continuum, which is a, a compact connected subset of which is, I mean, it's the boundary of this. The boundary of an open disk can be something very complicated. In other words, the, the closure of an open disk does not need to be a closed disk. Okay? So when the boundary is complicated, uh, people st still try to get some information. Uh, uh, like uh, circle homeomorphism to the boundary. So what is done? It's done what is called prime medical classification. And uh, I'm sorry for the kind of explanation I'm going to give because if you know the definition, then it will be fine. If you don't know, <laughs> it will be just worse. But it's it's something hard to be precise. But it's a way. So you have an open disk, and you want a way to attach a closed, uh, I mean, a circle to this open disk. And uh, define a topology on this union so that it becomes, with this topology, actually a closed thing. This is the prime medical classification. So it's a way to attach, to create a topology so that you can attach a, a, a circle to an open disk and get a closed thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think I no, I like the problem is that the, the only moment that I, I think with my hands on this thing when I when I got smart and paper, which is also a lot of that's hard to go. So you're right. You can you can take the single method you can make any this to the open disk of rapid one and then you uh, what? Uh -huh. exactly. So uh, you can think that it's a way of uh, looking at this disk in a nice way. So your disk becomes something like this, and you will now have a homeomorphism on the circle, which is not uh, uh, something real. Okay, the, the real boundary is something complicated, but you get this artificial boundary that you put, and, and your uh, homeo that you have here, it extends to a uh, uh, continuous homeo of the closed disk now, and you have a homeo of the boundary, which gives you the rotation number. And so um, our assumption is that this guy is rational. Okay, and, and how the theorem is proven? Okay. It is proven, the theorem is proven by showing that the fact that it's rational and the fact that the boundary of the disk, the boundary of the disk, this thing, is contained in the closure of a stable manifold implies that in this artificial boundary you must have saddles and you must have so these are saddles and this I'm going to write sort so here they are actually sort finitely many of them and they are, I will explain what they imply here in a second. Because uh, as I said, this is artificial thing. Oh, okay. What will it imply there? Uh, so this is a source. You may have another saddle here. What the other branch of the saddle does, I don't know. Okay, this might be really complicated. This it might have horseshoes. Uh, I know that there is no horseshoe between these two stable branches at this unstable branch that enters the disk. But with the other one, there must there might be a lot of complications. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah, 
So just keep it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the, the main point here is that uh, uh, okay to get to get that it's an attractor, it's really simple from from here because the dynamics inside this disk is conjugated to the dynamics in this disk. So if you look closely here, if you consider uh, a Jordan curve really close to the boundary. What is happening to this curve? The image of this curve get inside because this guy is a repeller. You see, this is a saddle, but the, this stable branch is entering. So this curve. This is gamma, and this is f of gamma. Just from the boundary, just from what we got in the boundary, you get that the curve is left inside. So you have an attractor. Okay, so, uh, uh, and what is I think more interesting is that these saddles are, are called accessible. So they actually live there. So every saddle lives there. So you actually, so you can describe the boundary of D in a certain sense. You have saddles like this. The other guy here, I don't know, it might be a mess. Okay, and these sources, oh, this also might be a problem because these sources are just some uh, repellers, connected repellers on the boundary. But the sources might contain the saddles. It, it can be really a mess. So the true information you get is you get that these saddles, they come here and they exist with one branch getting inside. And each point in the boundary, so each point in the boundary of the disk, which is not a source, is either a saddle or is either in a stable branch. Okay, so this proves that uh, D is. Exactly. So it's like the missionaries. It's used it uh, in order to have. Uh, fixed on theorem, a version of fixed on theorem. I'll speak about it. So I'll just uh, state a corollary of this. Corollary is the following. Uh, if uh, under the same hypothesis, no, let's continue. If F uh, from SP to SP is a CR generic detail. And Z is a saddle without homotopy points. Then then what happens? This is what happens. So this is a repeller. This is also a repeller. And these are the tracks. I don't know if I have to keep these here. Okay, so if you have a, a CR generic DTO in the sphere and a set which does not have a homoclinic point, what happens is that there's no accumulation between stable and stable uh, branches. This is fixed on theorem. Okay, fixed on theorem. I always state it precisely, but it says that uh, CR generic, sorry. CR generically, if an unstable branch accumulates on a stable branch, then they intersect. So if there is no uh, homoclinic point, then there's no accumulation. And using this and, and that thing, we can prove that actually what happens is 
uh, um, maybe more complicated version of the simplest possible case. The simplest possible case you would think, at least I would think, is this guy dies in a in a sink. This other guy dies in a sink. These two guys come from front. Maybe the same source. Maybe the same thing. Maybe the maybe these two repellents are the same. Okay, but this is the situation. This is related to to some stuff that uh, uh, to Van Trovesier uh, as well. Then I think only them first uh, they came in the second case. They did under another condition instead of PR generically. They were studying what is called uh, mildly distributed. So they wanted to to have a theory saying that. Uh, Oh, uh, either if you don't have uh, topological entity, either you are more scenario or completely uh, normalizing. And at some point, they prove something like this. We will see this. Um, it's kind of strong. I, I know it's moderate from the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think in one paper it was only in the other model, but uh, they 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 have to prove something like this. Okay, so uh, it also holds CR generically at least in the sphere. Uh, it, it also it actually holds in any surface, but on the uh, few more points. Okay, so I will say. Yeah, but things go. So if the Russian is true that there is no that has nothing to do with the other and then he applies to the other conversion. I'm going to state what I use. Yeah, yeah. In the other preserving case, he uses recurrence, but his result is I mean, you see, there, there's a technical result which holds in full general, and using recurrence, you get the advantage of that technical result. Bigstone's theorem. Bigstone, I don't know. Lemma. <laughs> uh, I'll write theorem. Not the main theorem of the paper, but uh, I think morally it's the main theorem. So it's the following. Uh, if F from M to M is a PR generic detail. Of a planar surface, and I'll just draw a picture. Okay, so you have a saddle, let's call it Q, and you have a, an unstable branch of this saddle, and you have another saddle. Suppose, suppose this guy accumulates on this. Okay, so uh, uh, the hypothesis is this. And this implies an heterogeneous interaction. Uh, I'll write this precisely. This implies that uh, Fi of as a transverse intersection with this guy. Okay, you, you don't get 
this is a technical thing, but you don't actually get uh, an intersection between this branch and this branch, but maybe of some interest of this branch. And if, if, if P equals Q, then you can, you can, you can prove that you can have I equals U. If it's the same point, then you will actually have get a uh, real. Yeah, so uh, the generalists, they are assuming, no, 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 it's not, it's not real, because we are not assuming that a pen is going to accumulate. The problem is that so tendencies are not allowed, but accumulate, so the, the generalist hypothesis that comes here is an hypothesis of, of certain continuity of closure of the signal and closure of uh, intersection versus intersection point that are, are residual, and so uh, they imply this thing that that closure of stable manifolds or unstable manifolds or stable branches or unstable branches they vary continuously with the map. And uh, it's not, uh, uh, in other words, it's not clear for me and also for Andres that that for instance, if your map were Kupka's male, this would be true. <laughs> this is a, a, a weird thing. <laughs> We don't know if Kupka's mail is enough or, or because his condition is, is a little bit seems to be strong. Okay, so if you if you want to, so uh, what's the, the restriction? The restriction is planar surface. So what is a planar surface? It's a surface that can be embedded on a sphere. So it could be either the plane or an analogous or the sphere itself. But you want to have a result like this. Uh, for surface with genus. And the, the main difficulty is that, uh, at least if you try to adapt uh, Pigstone's proof, proof, the important case is the case when you accumulate on a branch of the same point. And, and this bounds a disk if you are in a, in a planar surface and you have Jordan curve. And in the torus or with higher genus, the accumulation could be like, oh, uh, your branch gets close to the stable branch and then it goes around a hole, a genus, and then it gets closer, and then goes on. You see, so uh, in, in the end, you don't get this. So, uh, one of the first things we needed was a generalization of this. Again, there is a different Okay, so uh, it's okay if I continue. Uh, So I will state uh, a generalization <coughs> of things to other surfaces. Uh, I, I feel ashamed of calling it a uh, generalization because we have such a strong hypothesis. Uh, but the point is that this hypothesis we have, we already have. So this is by no means we want to. Okay, so oh, we generalize the peaks into other surfaces. No, we had a context where some hypothesis was lateral, and then we saw that under that hypothesis, peaks don't hold for other surfaces. That, that's it. So the generalization is the following if F is a PR generic detail of a Orientable surface and F has instead of with a full mesh. I will explain what this is, of course. Then the same conclusion goes. Okay, the same conclusion. So, of course, I have to explain what a saddle is of full mesh. And, and, and then you can ask me, oh, my God, but you're supposed, <laughs> but you're supposing something too strong. And in 10 minutes, I'll tell you that 
uh, it's not that strong because it's equivalent to one of our first hypotheses for the main problem that I did not tell you about. Okay. Okay. So what is a saddle for food? So uh, saddle with a full match. 42. I'll just explain it 42 that it's easier to, to draw a picture. Okay, so what is a saddle with a full match? So uh, we are assuming that we have a saddle in the torque. So this is the, the torque, okay? You have a saddle. And we say it has a full mesh if there are two different branches, as told me, two different branches, such that the following holds. When you lift the stable and unstable manifold to the plane, you get the following. So uh, I always think of the flat torus, which you never, probably everyone has ever thought of the torus, but uh, if you never, <laughs> just think that. Uh, uh, you are making pi minus one of the stable and unstable branch. So what you get, you get a point Z tilde, and then Z tilde plus one zero, Z tilde plus two zero, Z tilde plus, uh, no, 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 sorry. I'm not writing everything, so it will be insane, but you get all the integer translates of your point, all the integer uh, translates of the branches, and uh, saying that it has uh, a full mesh means the following, that if you consider any translate of Z tilde, this is table break. So if you follow this guy, this is lambda U, it will have at some point, a this is a topologically transverse a topologically transverse intersection with Landaya for every A B. That's why it's a full match because if you lift it, if you lift it, uh, the the environment for to the plane, then uh, actually there is one particular uh, unstable branch that intersects the translates of the stable branch. Translates, all the translates of that stable branch from that. Okay. So uh, 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 it might be complicated, but it's not. Uh, I mean, if you if you have an intersection with the translate by one to the right, by one to the left, one above and one below, then you get all of that. More or less. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, but this uh, makes the dynamics in the lift very weird. Okay. And if you're considering uh, another surface which has higher genus, you, the idea is the same. Uh, but instead of the plane, the, the universal power of the surface is the behind this, and you you consider the the, the covering map, you take the parameters of that thing, and then you 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 just say that this guy intersects the image of this guy by all that transformation. And the case of the torus and that transformation are the, the integer terms. In the general case, we have some small bits of the Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, a set with full mesh. Okay, so if you have a full mesh, then uh, uh, here, right? Yeah, if you have a full mesh, then fixed on both. So this theorem is not useful for fixed on both, because fixed on uh, proven that result in order to find uh, homogeneous points. So we wanted to find homogeneous points. And in here, I'm assuming that you have lots of them, but and then I want to, but uh, my use of this result is not the same as me. I just want to, to, to know that every time a branch accumulates on the other branch, then it's a good thing. 
Okay, so uh, uh, I have spent this right? So I. Did you define the standard? No. I'm sorry? Sorry. Did you define the standard? If you have a full map, and uh, if you already have a full and then a pair of, uh, if you could not have a few of the right in there, then it must be in the form of the closed of the internet, and then uh, it must be right in a bit. Periodically, outside the space. I mean, uh, uh, extension, yeah, but you could have something inside of it. I mean, essential only one if you are in generic setting. If you are not in generic setting, you could have saddles. Uh, no, you're right. This is an uh, essential only one, even without the energy. Uh, so, uh, uh, okay. Nothing brief and you want to show. I think this is the one I question on your back. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I prepared uh, a little, not a fresh course, like a catastrophic course on rotation theory. <laughs> but even the catastrophic parts, I won't be able to to give you because I, I won't have time. I'll just say one thing. So uh, uh, when you have, so let us consider also P two for the moment. If you have uh, a omeo of P two, In the identity class, if you have a only of uh, T two in the identity class, you can associate and and also a lift with the universal clover, like a circle circle only, right? Right. If you if you want to compute the rotational number of a circle only, you need a lift. If you uh, want to compute what will be called the rotation set of a homo, you also need a lift, and uh, you can compute uh, a set. Which is called the rotation set of this guy, and and it's what it's a uh, it's a set. Let me let me try to be. It's a set which captures the rotational. On something like that okay so you might have a point on t2 that after two iterates it fall on itself so it comes here and then it comes back here and in the lift this point might do something like this it comes here and then it comes to this p and this is p plus one z okay so you apply a field, you apply a field, and this happens. Uh, this means what? This means that the uh, uh, rotational speed of this point in the torus is like a half U. This is the, the main idea behind the uh, possible limits that you can. And it can, be, mm -hmm. it can be proven that it's compact, convex. And has other properties. So I'm I'm going to just state one of them that is important for me. So if this guy has interior, 
the period is not empty, then there exists shadow with full match for all rational in inferior materialization. So this is a natural hypothesis to assume that your rotations have uh, uh, have inferior because when you have inferior the dynamics is really complicated. You have topological this topological entropy. You have lots of periodic problems, lots of invariant sets with uh, you know with uh, uh, for instance if your rotation set is a triangle like this for all rationals inside the tri triangle you have periodic orbits with that rotation number uh, for any other point that's not rational you have an invariant set with that rotation number uh, the, the rotation set varies continuously so uh, these results are going to pronounce medium rabbits uh, a pronunciation. Oh, sorry, sorry. I in Portuguese, I I I, I always pronounce it as I write, so I don't make mistakes. <laughs> It, uh, so there are many results. So in, in, and, and this, if interior is not empty, then there are several with full mesh. This is something I proved in 2015. So uh, uh, we were interested in, in the dynamics when the rotation set has interior. So we could assume that we have set with full mesh. So this is a, a natural hypothesis in our set, the same. Okay, so I'll just say two things if I got two minutes. Okay, so the rotation set is not The question is so the consequence is. Uh, with this version of Pixel, the first result for S2 hold in. Any circle. Okay, so it holds in any circle. So if you have uh, uh, a set with a full mesh, this Pixton, uh, this version of Pixton holds, and then uh, the same result holds. So if you have this, is your set of Z, which has a full mesh. And suppose you are considering. The closure of this guy. The closure of both these guys, <clears throat> the closure of each one is fully essential. So the complement is made of this, right? They might be wandering or they might be very long. So if you have a disk, the same state, if you have a disk, the, I don't know how to but if you have a disk, the, and D is, a connected component of, for instance, the closure of this guy and the prime man's rotation number of D is rational, then the is a thing. That's the key. So, uh, how can all these things relate to the unbounded thing? The unbounded disks appear as connected components of the complement of this. Okay, so the unbounded disks, they are 
connected components of the complements of the either the stable branch or the unstable branch. So, uh, uh, and it's something interesting that I, I did not have time to to explain it to you in detail. But when you have an unbounded disk, for instance, in the tor, suppose it's invariant, right? And suppose it's invariant even in the lift. So you have this disk, and you have the the guys here, and you, each of them is invariant under F unit. Under suppose also that I'm so the fact that I'm assuming this guy is invariant. Suppose also that zero belongs to the interior of the rotation set. Okay. Suppose also that zero belongs to it. This situation is kind of typical. Then what you get is that the boundary of the tuna is equal to the boundary of all the translates. They have the same boundary. These guys are all disjoint. They have the same boundary. And this boundary is actually what? It's actually the closure of the lift of the closure of the stable matter, which is uh, a very complicated set because it's equivariant. This set is invariant under translation. But when you consider a lift of the disk, it intersects all fundamental domains. It is unbounded in every direction. Okay, so th these disks are, are, are a very complicated theory. And just, just to conclude, I will say the, the final, our main mm -hmm. result, one, we had two main results. I'll just take one that, that mm -hmm. you know, turns this thing, all this thing, I said that something that actually exists and appears quite a lot. So the theorem is, I will state it imprecisely, but the theorem is, suppose you have, for instance, a family, TR generic of Cepheus, of course, homotopic to the identity, uh, and uh, the interior of the rotation sets are not in it. Okay, in a in an interval in the parameter, the, the the rotation set when it has interior, it varies continuously in the Hausdorff topology. I mean, you you change this guy in the C zero way, and this compact sets very very continuously. So. Uh, if the interior is not empty at some parameter, it's not empty at all nearby parameters. Uh, uh, so uh, F is a CR generic detail. And uh, assume you have something like this. Your rotation set for a certain parameter is this one. And for another parameter, it's this one. In other words, I'm saying, assume it's not locally constant. As, as for, for instance, you, you look at the Arnold family in the circle, uh, it's constant at rational. The rotation number is constant at rational. The, the rotation set, you can show that under some uh, nice conditions, it's, it cannot eat a rational uh, immediately. As soon as it touches a rational, it cannot eat, a, eat it immediately. It, it, the rational has to stay in the boundary for a while. But if it moves continuously from here to here, then uh, uh, there is some, some guy in here, a rational point. Okay, that as some parameter is eaten by the rotation set. So if it changes, uh, the theorem says there exists uh, an interval. I contain it in T0, T1, such that there exists homotopically unbounded periodic disks, which are basins of, which are basins of sinks or sources and have 
uh, rational Riemann's rotation number. So these disks appear quite a lot because it's typical for family that the rotations that changes as the parameter changes. So every time it changes, you you create this. Thank you very much, Salvador. Do you have any comment? Quick questions? Yes. This comment I wanted to, to use the Riemann mapping, but it didn't make much sense because then you lose what is outside and you cannot prove continue, continuous expansion to the boundary. Primates are appropriate since because you can use continuity also on the boundary straight on this basin. Am I right? So primates are primates. Just Taking Riemann, maybe you forget what was outside and then you cannot do anything because you need to use holomorphism. But the continuity is Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is, uh, but it is more than continuity in the interior. But then you cannot extend. No chance. You lose continuity in the original surface. So, primates are using. Thanks. Any other comments or questions? If not, let's thank Salvador again. So we'll come back in four minutes. An announcement first. Um, about the hike, the bus for the hike departs tomorrow at 1.30. And for us to make it, the lunch will start 15 minutes earlier than usually. So at 12.45. Okay, thank you. I am the one that's sorry because I want to show you now. Well, just uh, this one. I got okay. Uh, so if if the rotation is going to be more precise, then if if you are using this kind of guy, there exists a homotopically unbounded periodic disk which are basins of sinks or sources and have rational uh, primary 